Welcome everybody to another take of Zooming with K Mitch. I'm back with season two and I'm excited to have my next caller on. She'll be joining us very soon. A very special athletic trainer of mine. So I'm happy to have her on today to gain some insight from her. Hello. I can't hear you. you you're on mute. Now I'm unmuted. Hi. Hey, I'm so happy to have you on Zooming with K. Mitch. I'm so, so excited to talk to you today. It's been a minute since we talked and I've seen you, so I'm so happy to have you on here today. How are you doing? Good. How are you? I am good. So I'm not going to prolong any of your time. So without further ado, can you go ahead and introduce yourself for me, please? Yeah. Um, yeah I'm Taylor Halleck. I am an athletic trainer. I work at Washington State university with women's basketball and I have been working here this is going to be my third season going yep. into it yep so starting off with the first question how important do you think staying healthy affects student athletes mental health um, I think it plays a huge factor into it I mean we talk about not only just physical health but obviously um, eating well getting enough sleep um, staying hydrated making sure that we're mentally and emotionally prepared uh, for activity is huge uh, I think that has a big part of it. You know, if you get a bad night's sleep, um, that kind of sets you up sometimes for just a bad day of practice and or just having an emotional day. Um, so obviously just being healthy and trying to keep up all aspects of your life um, in as healthy of a manner as you possibly can. It plays a huge part on mental health of just being even prepared to practice and getting ready for the day. Um, and that's kind of a big thing here. And um, we just kind of have to look at everything holistically and look at the person as a whole rather than just one part. So it's not only physical health, it's nutrition, it's taking care of your body and getting the rest that you need. Right. I think a lot of times as athletes, they just think about on the court stuff. They don't necessarily think about like, even if I'm not hurting, let me still go to the training room. Let me make sure I'm heating or icing before practice, after practice to make sure like for the next day, let me make sure I'm eating right, getting a good night's sleep. So yeah, uh, yeah most definitely. Next question. How do you help your injured players like regain confidence? Yeah, I like this question. Um, I think it's interesting. I think a lot of people don't think about this. It's it's really hard getting back on the court when you have an injury. Um, and my big thing too is is talking about um I do a lot of what what are you concerned about? Like what is your biggest fear and worry about getting back? Um, and I think that's that's a big factor into that. And once I kind of know what those fears are, it makes me it makes it a lot easier to develop a rehab program around that. So if people are nervous. Um, a lot of the times I'll do my rehab on a court. So just so they're having the experience of being on a basketball court again, rather than sitting in an athletic training room. Uh, there's lots of different ways you can kind of reintroduce them to the environment that they're in. Um, a lot of sport specific activity. So I won't send a basketball player out there that hasn't touched a basketball, right? Like we don't just go back out. We'll do some balance with dribbling. Um, they'll do some shooting um, drills on the side, things like that, just to work them slowly back into that environment. Um, especially most of the time, like as we're working them back in, a lot of it's like you'll do a 30 minute practice and then you'll do a half practice. And then as we're introducing that, we also introduce contact into it. So most drills you'll start with non-contact and just being around your your teammates again and passing with them, that's a huge part of it. So it's just kind of reintroducing um, the game of basketball slowly again um, while making it and kind of reintroducing. We start with a very controlled environment and work back mm -hmm. up to that chaotic environment, because obviously a basketball game, there's chaos everywhere. You have the fans, mm -hmm. you have coaches, you have teammates yelling at you. <laughs> so we slowly try to reintroduce that environment back into it. And that's kind of what that's what my job really is, is to reintroduce that environment. Yes, that's great. Taking those baby steps back into the game, not just like throwing you out there like good luck, but just taking those baby steps and knowing that really coming back is more mental, mental than physical. Yes, you're getting yourself. Absolutely. But like mentally, you have to know, like, can I still make this cut and, and, you know, trust my leg, you know, again, or my knee again and everything. So I love how you really introduce and work your players back in to, to, for them to be comfortable. Yeah touching on this subject as well how do you emphasize recovery days or how do you kind of reset your players so that's hard I mean basketball is one of those sports like as you know being a basketball player it's it's really almost a year-long activity now 
Um, so I kind of emphasize, I have, for example, right now I have two players that are doing, they're with me every day doing rehab, but today's an off day. Um, for me, even for my kids, especially that are rehab kids, I tell them to get out of the athletic training room. Like, please go home, kind of reset your mind, go do something you enjoy, go to a movie, like go hang out with your friends, do something that's not affiliated with basketball, because as important as this sport is, and as important it is to get better on your skill work, it's so important to take kind of a step back and do something for yourself. Mm -hmm. So I'm pretty big on that of any day that I can tell my kids to kind of get out of here and do something different is, is honestly a win. And that's almost just as good of a recovery as, um, you know, coming in and actually doing something. Um, I'm big more on like, I like to do recovery after practice. So that's kind of more of my time to have them come in. I'm like, you guys should be getting in a cold tub or Norma tech, um, to recover yourself, whether you're feeling good or not, because I know that those, those days add up very quickly. Um, and you, once we get into those 20 hour weeks, like it's grinding and you might only get one day off. Um, and so I'm pretty big on trying to get people out of here. I mean, obviously if people have to come in here and get things done, we'll do it. Um, but I also want it to be minimized. So I don't want them spending, you know, five hours in here. It's going to be a quick, let's do what we need to do. And then I want you to go out and enjoy the rest of your day. Right. I love that because as we all know, it's life beyond basketball and you're in, yeah. I what I really preach to our players now that we are much more than just basketball, or you are much more than a basketball player. So don't be so, you know, concerned with the basketball aspect that you lose yourself, you know, as outside of this. So I Absolutely. love that. get out, get out, just go, you know, <laughs> enjoy your friends. Right. Right. Next question. What is the biggest misconception to you surrounding injured players return to play? I like this. Um, my biggest thing is, I think people forget, um, one is people aren't always super excited to go back. And I think that's kind of the, they're scared, right? So there's, there's a lot of anxiety with it. Um, and I think it actually sets people back a little bit longer than it probably should. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that's the common misconception is I think every, especially with coaches, like they just think like everyone should be so, so excited to be back that they kind of forget that there is an, an anxiety with that. And your identity has kind of changed a little bit too of you haven't been practicing with your teammates, right? So you've been a little isolated. Um, I just think that there's, it's so common for people to forget that people won't, athletes won't always be super excited to be back into the sport. And there is that initial um, nervousness and maybe like a little bit of depression, um, mm -hmm. knowing that they're, they might not be as good as they were a month yeah. ago. And I think that's a huge part that people forget, um, especially coaches um, in the process. And I think that's really important to touch on that and realize that there is there is going to be anxiety with it. Um, and it's a kind of important to just to nurture that um, and to get people uh, embrace that, like embrace the anxiety with it and, and say it's OK to make those mistakes, because we all know that when you're coming back, you might forget five plays like yeah. <laughs> you just don't if you're not doing it every day you're gonna forget them um and most you know most people just get benched right away but I'm hoping like you can kind of work through the system a little bit and kind of allow like those mistakes to happen um I think that's a huge part and I think that's a, a big misconception that everyone thinks that someone's just so excited to get back when in reality it, it's scary wow I mean that is one of the most realest answers legit like I that's surprising for me because as I like I've never you know been injured to where I had to sit out for months or anything like that but that is like something to think about as a coach or other teammates you think like oh my my play my teammate is back she should be excited in all reality they are nervous it is yeah. it is that isolation before to now like am I going to be that same player you know what I'm saying and most likely you're probably not because it's, you just have to work your way to being a different player. So I, I really love that answer. Like that was a very real answer. Last question, any point, any pointers to college students pursuing athletic training careers? Yeah, um, I think it's awesome, especially when, I mean, I feel like we get a lot of, a lot of people that are in this profession are people that have been injured. Um, not me personally, I've, I've been really fortunate, but um, I just like helping people. But I think with athletes, like it's so special if when they want to do a pursue a career in athletic training, because they really understand again, like the pressure um, and the different dynamics of what's put on a student athlete. It, it's not easy. Like your lives are not simple. It's not get up and go to practice. It's get up, go to school, 
um, deal with your friends, deal with boyfriends, deal with girlfriends, um, families doing things uh, holistically. Like you just have a different mindset. Right. Um, and I think it's awesome that if you want to do athletic training, like um, also lean into the athletic trainer you had and in, in college or high school, talk to them about how you can, what programs are good and what are not and kind of how you can get into the profession because um, it's changing and it's going to forever be changing. But um, I would just lean on the person that you kind of like have around you as far as your athletic trainer, because we are always loving to talk to somebody that wants to do our profession um, and always willing to answer questions and nurture you and help you understand, um, especially even what you're doing as far as treatment, if you're interested in it, like we're always happy to explain it. So I think it's important just to ask questions and lean on the people that you have had in your life. Um, but as far as the sports medicine department, even team doctors, like they love to help with this too. Um, and can kind of get you going in the profession that you want to go on. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Thank you for those awesome pointers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for being on my zoom today. It was so awesome seeing you and listening and giving, uh, you giving us great insight. Um, I wish you the best at Washington state. I seen that y'all are yeah. the top 20. Y'all are in the top 25. We so. are. And for the first time in a long, long time. I think actually the first time ever. Uh -huh. so that was really awesome. That is really awesome. And I know you play a huge part of it off, off the court, you know, that you don't know, get all the shine all the time, like the coaches or assistant coaches, but you are play a huge factor. So I really appreciate you being on my Zoom and I wish you the best and I'll be in touch with you. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs>